What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 15.3.1 just about two weeks after the release of iOS 15.3. And in addition, Apple also dropped iPadOS 15.3.1, watchOS 8.4.2, and macOS Monterey 12.2.1. But of course, in this video, we're talking mostly about iOS 15.3.1, but I will also briefly touch on what's new in watchOS and macOS, the new updates for them as well. And as always, if I notified you of this update before your phone did, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. I post these videos every single time a new iOS update drops. All right, so let's take a look at the size of this update. You can see here it came in at about 256 megabytes on my iPhone 13. That is coming from iOS 15.3. So if you're coming from 15.3, it's going to be a very, very small update. Of course, it is a double point update, so we are expecting a small size because it is going to be mainly bug fixes. So let's go ahead and check out the build number for this new update. If we go to our settings, general about 15.3.1, we can see the new build number is 19D52. And if we go down to the bottom, you can see that the modem firmware is 1.41.06. All right, so now what's new here in 15.3.1? And again, as I alluded to earlier, this is a double point update, which means it's going to be mainly bug fixes and security enhancements. The big updates are the point updates like 15.4, which is dropping next month. So don't go into this update expecting many things to change because it's mostly on the back end. And if we take a look at what Apple says here, you can see that they said 15.3.1 fixes an issue that may cause braille displays to stop responding. So that is one of the main bug fixes that was addressed with this update. Now also a big reason that Apple pushed out this update as well is if we take a look at the security notes here, you could see that a WebKit bug that may have been actively exploited out in the wild has been patched with this update as well. So you can see the impact is processing maliciously crafted web content may lead to arbitrary code execution Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited. So it's never a good thing when we hear that a bug may have been actively exploited out in the wild. So that is definitely a reason to update to 15.3.1. And one of the main reasons Apple also pushed this out instead of waiting another month for 15.4. Apple also published a press release today outlining their approach to making AirTags basically as safe as possible after all of the bad press over the past few months about people being stalked and things like that. So we could see something changed in the code of 15.3.1, you know, related to the Find My Network and to the AirTags, but it's too early to tell just yet. And plus, the bulk of those new changes will be coming later in the year. But if I do find anything new in 15.3.1, I will mention that in this weekend's follow-up video coming on Saturday. Now, as far as bug fixes go, there are a couple of bug fixes here in 15.3.1 as well. And it's not mentioned in the release notes or anywhere else that I've seen. So number one is PDF scrolling is improved finally on 15.3.1. So at 15.3.1 on the right, 15.3 on the left, and this is my 13 Pro. So it's more powerful than the 13. And take a look at the stutter when I go to scroll on a PDF inside of Safari. It is just a nightmare. It's always been a nightmare for quite a while now, ever since iOS 15 released. But now at 15.3.1, Look how much smoother it is. It's not perfect. It's actually better in 15.4, the betas, but you could see it's significantly smoother here on 15.3.1 than it is on 15.3. So that is one thing that has been addressed here with this update that's kind of hidden and not really mentioned anywhere. And then also the storage bugs. If you go to your settings, general iPhone storage, this should load properly. I know a lot of people have had issues with this and it's been supposedly fixed several times in the past and some people are still not seeing that fixed, but you could see that finally fixed here with 15.3.1. You just may have to wait a minute. You may have to force close the app but your storage should load up properly and it should also say the correct amount of storage used. But as far as anything else goes, I really haven't had too many issues with iOS 15.3. So if you have had issues, you may see those resolved here with 15.3.1, but you know nothing is mentioned in the release notes or anything like that, so don't expect a ton of major changes until 15.4 comes, including those big bug fixes. Now moving on to the performance. Performance feels about the same as 15.3 to me, and it likely is the exact same as 15.3, just with the added bug fixes and security enhancements. But regardless, I did go ahead and run a Geekbench test. You can see here I scored a 1721 on the single core and a 4739 on the multi-core. So very similar 
similar scores to iOS 15.3 because like I said, it's likely going to be pretty much exactly the same in terms of performance. And just like with the performance, the battery life likely has not been tweaked at all with this update. So battery life is likely going to stay the same. So if you're having battery drain issues, you might still have those after updating. And if your battery life is good, it's probably going to stay good with this update. All right, so now let's answer the question, should you update to 15.3.1? And I say, yes, you should. Again, we're not gonna have any hits to the performance of the battery life with this update, so there's really no downside, and you get the you know upside of having that actively exploited bug being patched, you have the PDFs you know, performing a lot better in Safari and possible other bug fixes on the back end that have not been discovered yet. But of course, as I always say, if you're having absolutely zero issues on 15.3 and you kind of have PTSD from past updates that kind of you know screwed up your device when you didn't think it would, then you're probably fine staying on 15.3, at least until iOS 15.4 drops. But just keep that in mind. If you want to be up to date, you know, it's always a good idea, especially related to security. It's always a good idea to keep your phone as up to date as possible. Now, I also wanted to briefly talk about the watchOS and macOS updates, which were released alongside this iOS and iPadOS update. So you can see here, watchOS 8.4.2 came in just over 100 megabytes. And Apple doesn't really mention what was fixed in this, but I would imagine this is a further, you know, attempt by Apple to fix the charging issue with the Apple Watch Series 7 and any other Apple Watch that had charging issues, mainly related to third party adapters. So definitely worth a try to go ahead and update if you're still having issues with charging and any other issues, you may want to go ahead and install this update. And for macOS, Apple released version 12.2.1 and this was released to fix a separate bug from iOS and watchOS and that was the Bluetooth battery drain bug. So Apple says in the release notes that quote, macOS 12.2.1 provides important security updates and fixes an issue for Intel based Mac computers that may cause the battery to drain during sleep when connected to Bluetooth peripherals. And there was also the WebKit bug patched with macOS 12.2.1 as well. All right, so now what's next for Apple? So next up, I believe is iOS 15.4, and we can expect that in the first half of March. So either the week of the 7th or the week of the 14th would be my guess for iOS 15.4. So Apple is supposedly having a event on March 8th that has not been confirmed just yet. But if that's the case, we could see iOS 15.4 either later that week or early the following week on the week of the 14th. So Apple could always release a 15.3.2. That is a possibility. I don't think it's a very likely possibility, but it is an option for Apple, of course, if anything else is found in the meantime that needs addressed. But for now, just get ready for iOS 15.4, which is coming in the first half of March. It is a very exciting update. I'm covering the betas right now. And of course, I will cover the final release when it does eventually drop. There are a ton of features in that update. I'm excited. For that one but anyways guys there you have it that is ios 15.3.1 a very minor bug fix update but of course that is expected with all of the new features coming in ios 15.4 so hope you guys enjoyed this video as always if you did i would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up and of course make sure to subscribe for my follow-up coming on saturday and of course future coverage of all of the ios 15 updates but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon